So, where do you want to start? I guess at the beginning somewhere. It was a crazy beginning. Crazy. What was the beginning? <laughs> just wanna celebrate life, celebrate living. Isn't that right, Mr. Noodle? He doesn't agree. Mr. Noodle's a grouch. I don't want these noodles. I don't want these. Stupid noodles! <laughs> Stop feeding the cats! Stop feeding the cats! No! Feeding the straight kids! No! Oh, there you go! Oh, there you go! <laughs> I'm about to be reviewing one of the most Disgusting OnlyFans. I'm sorry. No, you're not. Of course I am. You're not. So. Of course I am. You're not. So. I am. No, you're not. Yes, I am. It hurts when I sit down or stand up. I had had some success with a Delray Misfit series I made for YouTube, and then had even more success with a series about Anne Boleyn Reed. But like every other YouTuber out there worth their salt, I wanted more success. I wanted bigger views and more subscribers. So I asked the YouTube community, okay guys, who is the biggest person I can make a video on? What will get me those views? And one name kept coming up more than any other. Nikocado Avocado? Nikocado Avocado, yes. Did you know who Nikocado was before the fans suggested him to you? Uh, I had heard the name before, but I hadn't watched a full video of his. I just knew he was some overweight guy who ate food on camera and was very dramatic. Eating food on camera, or mukbang as it's called. I had seen others do that sort of thing. Amberlynn Reed, Knee Rap Nate from The Misfits, Foodie Beauty, and a few other desperate people here and there. It wasn't my sort of thing to be honest, so I didn't think a video on Nikocado would interest me. But then I noticed his subscribers. Over 3 million of them. I knew this mukbang style of video was popular, but 3 million subs popular? That surprised me. Surely there had to be more to this guy than just eating food on camera. There had to be something else that was pulling in all of those subscribers. Video after video, there he was, consuming ungodly amounts of food, crying, <laughs> shouting, STOP FEEDING THE CAT! and even fighting. OUCH! People often say that Nikocado is actually a genius. Do you think he's a genius? Hmm, uh, good question. You, you have a nice sounding voice as well, by the way. Uh, in the beginning, I thought he was a smart guy, sure. I went back as far as his channel went, and the first video on there was from the 1st of September of 2016, 4.4 million views. The views didn't shock me now, but his appearance certainly did. This was not the same guy I had just watched devour food while in tears. This guy was thin, nice looking, and spoke really, really well. What do we know? Albert Einstein says, the more I know, the more I really learn that I know nothing at all. It didn't even seem like the same person. In the few videos I had watched so far, Nikocado only spoke of drama, things he didn't like, and things that angered him. But in this first video on his channel, he spoke calmly and confidently about something he believed in, or didn't believe in to be more accurate. He was quitting the vegan community. In Nikocado's eyes, the vegan community had turned sour. It had gone from something he wanted to be a part of to something rotten. He was sick of all of the infighting and the beef, and was tired of everybody just acting foul. Any of these working for you? Um, not really, no. <clears throat> Nick Ocado seemed like a rational, thoughtful guy, and he actually got a lot of support for this video. He just came across as a normal person. So I wondered, how did this nice looking, thin, rational, likeable guy turn into well, what he would later turn into. 
So I'm still bed bound. I'm still disabled. I'm going to be disabled. Nikocado Avocado was born Nicholas Perry on the 19th of May 1992. He may have sounded American, but he wasn't born there. I was adopted from Ukraine when I was like one years old, a little bit less. He grew up in Harrisburg, Pennsylvania, and when he was just five years old, he went to therapy for the first time. And since then, Nicholas has been in and out of therapy. His knowledge of his adoption was the cause of his mental issues. He just couldn't understand why his biological parents decided to put him up for adoption. And as a result, he acted out by always seeking attention, always wanting to be in the spotlight. And this was it. This was Nicholas's call to action, if you will. He wanted to be famous, wanting the attention. And it didn't matter to him whether he was getting the attention for positive or negative reasons, what mattered was that he was getting people to notice him. Growing up, he didn't get along with his adoptive father. I didn't like him, I didn't get along with him, I didn't really bond with him. I was into music, he was into sports, I was into violin, he was into race cars, I was into being clean, he was getting down and dirty with the baseball team, you know, it was like... He may not have always gotten along with his father, but that never stopped both of his parents from supporting him. Coming out was kind of easy for me because my parents already knew. And they accepted and they accepted it. My father was very accepting of me. He said, that's how you are, son, you know. I, <laughs> what am I supposed to do about it, you know? My mother, same thing. They still support me with everything I want. So I was lucky, you know. Nicholas did sound like he could be a tricky kid to parents sometimes. I remember I would like wake up in bed and have to go tee tee. And I would be too lazy to go down the stairs to the bathroom. So I would just sit in bed and pee. And he also had a sister in the house too. And despite them not being blood related, they seemed pretty similar. My sister, when she would play computer games, she would play computer games and she would poop her pants because she didn't want to turn the game off. She would be sitting in the computer chair pooping. <laughs> and my mom was so furious with that. In his pre-teens, he was diagnosed with attention deficit disorder. At school, he started off as a hard worker, but that didn't last long. I was on the Dean's list, I was hardworking. I have a trouble with balance because I, I missed out on so much. And then I went to the total opposite side and all my grades kind of went down. And then I was out like Wednesday and Thursday and Friday night and Saturday night. Oh my gosh, I don't know how I survived. But when it came to like semesters, one semester I was like strictly to the books. And the other semester I was strictly at the club. Nicholas always had a passion for music though. But something that I was true to was my love for music and I loved chorus. I would always come in first place, always. I mean, sometimes I got second with them. He had wanted to pursue a career in music as a violinist and he was good, very good in fact. He used to busk in New York with his violin and he even went to acting school. He definitely wanted to be a star of some kind, either through his music or through acting. It wasn't actually Nicholas's idea to start a YouTube channel, it was someone else's. Someone who would become very special to him. Orlin and I met 2012, it was like winter of 2012, turning 2013, in a Facebook group called Gay Vegan Men. He thought I was weird, I thought he was weird. It took us a good year of being friends, a year and a half of being friends and learning to trust each other and value, value each other for who we are, not what we look like or... I have these roses here for Orlin. Mmm, they smell so nice. I hope he likes them. I know he'll like them. Orlin was living in Colombia at the time. They would fly back and forth to visit one another, but would settle down in Colombia. And this is where Nicholas started his YouTube journey. The pair may have been in love and happy, but they didn't have it all easy. Nicholas and Orlin had to survive on just two to three dollars a day. Orlin would sometimes not eat, just so that Nicholas could. Their first date was at a fruit festival, and a lot of their relationship was built around food and veganism. It was actually Orlin who came up with the name Nicocado Avocado. Nicholas's YouTube channel quickly picked up some steam, he would make videos about vegan food and he would play his violin. 
and he was enjoying making content for his channel and the fans he was accumulating. But living in a different country wasn't easy for Nicholas. Because he wasn't a full resident of Colombia, he had to leave every three months. He admits that maybe he was a little pushy in the early days, trying to push veganism on people a little too much. But he learned from his mistakes and stopped being too aggressive with it. No one likes an aggressive vegan after all. I'd be perfectly willing to have a boxing match or an MMA match where I could be beat your face in. And being overly keen on others to be vegan and various other reasons, like not being proud of the content he had produced anymore, and having the vegan community constantly pick apart his videos was why he got rid of those early videos on the channel. In that first video that remains, where he discussed leaving the vegan community, he discussed his reasons for wanting to leave. Basically today, I got a comment from someone, I'm not going to say their name, and they basically said that I, they were implying that I wasn't vegan enough. Why do vegans have to make everything about veganism? It's an important cause, but when it becomes everything, you sound no different than the Mormons going door to door, knocking on the door saying, join my club. I Poor Nicholas just seemed to have the weight of the world on his shoulders. Eating it in front of a camera is not activism, Nick. Gosh, so originally, this is so funny, it's happening in real time at my computer. Veganism needs to be less about being an attention horse sellout. Do some activism and serve others. Please don't tell me what I should do with my channel. It's like telling me, you need to do this with your life. Um, telling me to do more activism so that I can, I can be at your vegan level. It's like we're all trying to be the better vegan here. He may have responded to the negative comments, but it all seemed a bit pointless. Changing someone's mind in a YouTube comment section isn't exactly a common thing. And to be fair to Nicholas, when he took a step back and thought about it, he knew this himself. Everyone wants to believe they're right. That's just how we are, you know? It's like, that's why I see people arguing about if the moon landing is a hoax or not. People are still going back and forth, back and forth, and both of them have evidence to back it up. You're only gonna go in circles, and what difference does it make, you know? It doesn't solve the world's problems. It, everyone just wants to be right. <coughs> and I realize this, and this is why I've made videos apologizing for when I've screwed up, for example. That Nicholas may have wanted to become a star of some kind, but nothing was worth compromising his morals. He just didn't like the whole vegan drama side of things, and he wasn't going to get involved in their drama just for views. He could have gotten more views if he had joined in on all of the infighting in the community, but he just wasn't interested. He was going to get the views his way, the honest way. I'm already vegan, I'm already converted vegan, I already make videos about veganism, and you're telling me I still need to do more, that I need to do activism. A truly happy person wouldn't do this, you know? It's like, this is when veganism becomes like a mental illness, I think. After explaining why he was done with the vegan community, Nicholas was back to doing what he did best, eating food on camera. He was still vegan, of course, he was just not taking part in the silly games of the vegans anymore. And in his next video, Nicholas seemed much happier while eating mac and cheese. Vegan mac and cheese, of course. One thing I noticed though was that after just a couple of minutes, he was interrupted by an advert. In fact, the advert cut him off mid-sentence. He was wanting to entertain and inform, but he still needed to make money. Still though, having an advert cut you off after just a couple of minutes seemed a bit odd. The video was pleasant, there was no drama. He knew exactly what he wanted his videos to be. But I just want to be like your friend, or if you're laying in bed early in the morning, it's Saturday morning, you're sitting there and you're like, oh, I don't feel like getting out, I'm gonna eat some breakfast, get my bacon and eggs, get whatever you eat, cereal, I love cereal these days. We can just chit chat about stuff and I can, Toy Stories and Noodle can try to steal the show. No, I'm gonna do. We even got to meet Noodle, Nicholas's pet bird. Around this time, most mugbangers were primarily women, so to have Nicholas doing it was already a bit different, and the bird added a little extra flavour. The whole video was just charming and a little bit of fun. He didn't worry about things like measuring everything perfectly when making his mac and cheese, but it didn't matter. It wasn't like he wanted to be a world-class chef or anything. 
The people who watched him didn't watch him because he was this amazing chef, they watched him because he was likeable. And he threw in the odd handy hint now and again as well. Oh, and add the avocado, take out the seed of course. And His way of getting a stone out of an avocado was good, but I prefer Amberlynn Reed's way of doing it. But I was opening an avocado, you guys know that stupid circle that's in an avocado. It's the seed. I don't know what I did, but somehow I went. Now, making the mac and cheese didn't contain any meat, of course, but it wasn't the healthiest thing he could have eaten. Although he was still young and thin, he could probably get away with it for now, even though he thought otherwise. I can't talk because I just walk up three floors. I am hashtag obese. I am a little out of shape right now. Out of breath walking up those three flights of stairs home. So not offending anyone who is overweight, I'm just saying. I need to work on my fitness, that's what I'm trying to say. Um... And sitting in front of the camera, talking to his YouTube fans and eating a lot of food were clearly making Nicholas happy. Or at least happier than dealing with a bunch of vegans. Not only was he done with any negative communities, but he was done sacrificing his health with crazy strict diets. I've been eating so much more fat lately, the past like four weeks, and I just feel better mentally. And I'm done with diets. It's been... Paying attention to what his subscribers wanted was something Nicholas was trying to get better at. And he soon realised people would lose interest if he just ate nice healthy foods all the time. There, you, you clicked on a, a greasy mac and cheese mukbang for crying out loud, alright? Because this is what we're after. We're not after cauliflower mukbang, you know? It's kind of like, oh, it sounds healthy. Healthy means. His videos, as pleasant as they were, were just that. Pleasant. It was usually just Nicholas talking about fluff. So, oh, speaking of gotta go, how many of you like Raven Simone? I have been watching The View. Which... This is what he was trying to do after all. Make it seem like he was sat chatting with a friend. And he always made sure to be positive and happy. You know, I've gotten so much better in it in life. I really have, like, appreciating what I have and, like, taking things day by day. And I'll, I'll wake up and I'll be like, oh, look at the view today. Or I'll be like, oh, I just love our apartment. Or, oh, I just love this plant. Like, just finding some, some little thing and making it special and letting that give you a little Sims booster on your happiness scale. How you and this was how his videos went on. Nicholas eating a decent amount of food, offering words of wisdom, telling stories, he would show off Noodle. It was like sat chatting with a friend. He would happily talk about personal things as well. Here's the thing. I suffer from a lot of mental dis disorders. I suffer from poor mental health in different areas. And it might sound funny, but it's actually true for me. It's actually... I might be able to relate to some of you guys out there right now by saying this. I suffer from hypochondria. Paranormal hypochondria. If you tell me that my head's crooked, I'll be like, oh yes, that does explain. You know, my head has been feeling a little off these days. You're, you have head falling off syndrome. Your head will fall off. Oh yes, that's right. Oh yes. I. He may have still struggled at this time with his mental health, but at least he had Orlin to help him through it. And it was always nice to get an Orlin cameo. Despite his videos not being drama filled, or have anything that exciting happen in them, he still had plenty of fans. Here comes the Tato Avocado. Now, his videos, or at least most of the ones I've seen on his channel, have been like... He call, he says it mukbang, but I'm not sure if that's right. It might be like mukbang, mukbang. Mukbang. I'm, I'm gonna call it mukbang. It's mukbang. Mukbang, because he calls that. They're, they're eating shows. Where he kind of just like, sits and eats. And it... All of his food always looks f delicious, and I always want it, and I always watch him and get hungry, and then I hate myself because, <laughs> because, like, because I'm hungry and I'm too lazy to like go bike into town and get food. But yeah, no. Yeah, he does that, which I think is just like really cool. Until like, he's just like a funny, nice guy, and like his reactions to everything are like Thank so Thank you so much. His face kind of. My favorite YouTuber is Trisha Paytas. Um, I just love how real she is. She 
I just love Trisha Paytas, okay? Trisha Paytas and Nikocado Avocado. She does mukbangs and stuff, and I am obsessed. I love people that make long videos because I like to watch them when I'm doing my makeup or my hair or cleaning. So that's why I think I like Trisha and Nick. So. What do you think about Nikocado having so many loyal fans and more subscribers than you? Uh, I've make I've got plenty of loyal fans. Mr. Snowflake, What's... I hate you. How have you done that? Mr. Snowflake, I hate you. I, I don't even know who these people. Get this off the screen. Yeah, I can't. Get this off the screen. Yeah, I can't, I can't stand the... Mr. Snowflake. His channel may have been doing well, but if he wanted to be the real big star he had been dreaming of since being a kid, talking about who he liked on the View probably wasn't going to cut it. Nicholas started doing collabs with friends to make the videos a little more interesting. It was a nice change at first from just watching Nicholas on his own, trying to think of things to talk about. It's always better to have two people on camera after all. Stop coughing! Well, most of the time it's better. Like I say, it was a nice change at first seeing him on camera with someone else, but I quickly realised that in fact it was worse. When he was on his own, he would at least tell stories of his childhood or talk about who he was. But when he was with someone else, it was just lots of laughing at nothing and usually just an hour of pleasantries. Nicholas was smart about his eating though. Yes, he would eat a lot of food on camera, but he wanted to make sure he never really got out of shape. But I'm also here to pick up a bike because if I want to keep doing these mukbangs and I don't want to get obeso, obesa, I, <laughs> I can, you know, if I keep this up, my clothes will stop fitting and that will be a problem, so I'm here to also pick up a bike so I can make sure that I have balance in my life. And to be fair, it's not like he would finish the food every time. There was usually a good amount of food in front of him, but it was often too much for him to finish. And Nicholas wanted this YouTube career to be exactly that, a career. He wanted more views and more subscribers. Oh god, I'm him, aren't I? Telling stories and what he thought about the view wasn't cutting it. Having pleasant collabs wasn't cutting it either. He was always wanting to know what the winning formula was. What do the fans want to see from him? What will attract more eyes to his channel? Someone sent me a snap on Snapchat which is Nikocado Avocado, by the way, and they were just like, I would prefer if your mukbang was less talking and more grubbing, just straight up grub. Or maybe some, you know, I got so many snaps, maybe it was boring, but someone said something about grub. They are like, just do some straight up grub. No talk, just eat. How many of you would like that? If you would, in your comment, when you comment on this video, which you will, you're gonna put hashtag grub. If you just want one, of, one mukbang where I just and no, no talk. Is this a good story? How many of you liked my grilled cheese yesterday? Thank you from yesterday, all you guys who commented about the stuff, whether I should have a clean white background or a plant background. You guys, I got so many comments yesterday about you like it when I have facial hair. You know, for me, I, I don't. I like it when I'm smooth. I feel like it makes me look five years younger. And that's what I'm going for, but you guys seem to really like me in facial. Comment down below. Do hashtag hairy sloth or hashtag smooth sloth? Hairy sloth or smooth sloth? He did try his best to tell interesting and dramatic stories, but the truth is he didn't have anything dramatic or interesting to say. So then we finally get to one city and then we have to do a transfer to another city. And in that transfer, you know, I'm taking my bike out of the luggage beneath the bus. And all of a sudden, a chicken pops out. A chicken pops out of where the luggage was. And Orlin goes up to the man. What'd you say to him? You're like, was this really here? I'm like, oh, how long was the chicken here? He's like, oh yeah, like nine hours. The whole time. The chicken yeah. was under the bus with the luggage, or what, how many hours it was. <laughs> crazy, crazy, like... His first video on the channel started with such promise. For me, anyway. He was passionate about something, spoke honestly, spoke from the heart. But after that, it was all ghost stories and what he watched on TV, and miming to songs. Ah, oh, the miming. And although it was something different having his pet bird Noodle in the videos, it's not like Noodle did anything. Well, most of the time he would do nothing. I have two last bites. Hopefully you understand. <gasps> Ew! 
Noodle, you're never supposed to put, that's why he was antsy. He had to go, that that's why he was turning around. Noodle, no. Noodle. <laughs> what did you do? No. Pooping on Nicholas was fun. It just didn't happen nearly enough. And Noodle didn't really speak or do anything but sit on his shoulder. What's the point of having a sidekick who doesn't do anything? What was fairly interesting though was when Nicholas would talk about Orlin, because it was usually something about how Orlin was annoyed at him. I come back upstairs with Orlin and he opens the door and goes, what is wrong with you? No, oh my gosh, are you crazy? So I had this on, you know, all the way up, 400 degrees Fahrenheit, and then I had it on just to preheat so I could have this stuff. He's like, oh my gosh, you're gonna kill us. You're so useless, like he was so mad at me. Even when they would tell a dull story, it was still funny to see the other's reaction. It's about time we got new ones. Well, the funny story is that my old glasses snapped in half because I sat my big booty on them. <laughs> and I went to get new ones, but they were very expensive. So I'm like, hmm, how about this frame looks like it fits? So they took out the lenses from my old glasses and stuck them into these ones. And then they kind of super glued it in so they don't fall off. It was a great idea. <laughs> Saved a bunch of money. Yes. Yeah. Mm. Last night I had the weirdest dream. Oh. I don't remember. <laughs> it's so weird. It's so weird that I can't even remember it. It was not edge of your seat stuff, but it was nice to see Nicholas on screen with Orlin interacting. It made for better conversations, and they seemed very happy together. It was good to see genuine love on screen. The first mukbang to feature Orlin did well for views, better than his previous videos. Was it because Orlin appeared in the video for a little while? Or was it because Nicholas got upset? We're in high school. I want to go back and repeat my district PMEA concert where I was first chair of the second violins and I was principal chair and I had my solo. Did I even have a solo? I don't remember. Um, you know, where I won first place and there I was making beautiful music and just felt, <sighs> you know, I really, I really miss it. Oh my gosh, I don't know why I feel so sad. <sighs> well, I'm getting, um, I'm getting my violin when I go back to Florida, you know, so I want to be able to play for you guys. This bug bug sucks now. <laughs> Oh god, what is in here? <laughs> Nicholas couldn't be sure what it was that helped him out with the views, so he decided he would carry on doing what he did in this video. He would feature all in a lot more, and he would cry a lot more. No video Nicholas had uploaded since that first video on his channel had gotten anywhere near as many views, so he decided to do a more extreme version of that. Instead of just speaking from the heart and showing passion, he cried, and instead of quitting the vegan community, he quit something else. The fact that we're omnivores, no matter how you look at it, we were not designed, whether you believe in God, whether you believe in the stars, whether you believe in the psychic twins like I do. We're omnivores. We're omnivores. We don't have four chambered stomachs to digest plant matter like cows do. You're a terrible person just because you don't eat what I eat. I am deficient in iron if I'm not absorbing B12. I was raw, I followed it to a T, I listened to all those health gurus, all those holistic doctors, doctors, and wow, did I lose teeth, I lost hair, I lost mental sanity. You know, of course I wanna please people in the internet. You know, this video is gonna take really hard for me to, to upload because I know it's gonna get a huge swarm of people saying, shame on you, you should think of the cows before your health. And the oldest lived lady on earth? ate three eggs a day. Who are my heroes in life? I look up to David Attenberg, studying plants and animals, and he was asked in an interview, this is one of the most intelligent, knowledgeable people on the planet when it comes to the circle of life, when it comes to nature, when it comes to what's natural. And he was asked, why aren't you, why aren't you vegan? He goes, because I'm not designed to be vegan. 
Mother Teresa. When I took all animal products out of my diet, my violin skills went down. I don't want to make people mad. I am sorry. I'm sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I am sorry. He had done it. After not eating meat for over 10 years and being a vegan for five, he had officially given up being a vegan. Yes, he quit being a vegan, but why? Well, as he mentioned there in his ramblings, he was low on certain things and he wasn't feeling good. But was that the real reason? Maybe. But maybe it was because there was more chance of getting more views by watching someone eat 10 cheeseburgers at McDonald's than watching someone eat a bowl of quinoa. Who knows? People often say Nicholas is very clever, so who knows his reasons behind quitting. Nevertheless, the video got him the views he was after. So what do you do as a YouTuber when a video does well for you? Well, you make another. Much like how Hollywood will make a sequel to a movie which is basically the same film. Or like how I'm now stuck making Anne Boleyn videos for the rest of my life. And that's what Nicholas did. He made a video that did well for him, so he made another. Everyone victimizes everyone. Plants victimize other plants. They kill each other, they constrict each other. Vines will constrict other plants. Lions will victimize sheep. There's this one raw Buddhist who had, he has gone blind. What I'm about to read to you is studies that I found out of Harvard, okay? 52 minutes almost, justifying why he wanted to not be a vegan. In the description to his video, he writes, please do your best to watch till the end. And after just a minute, he had an advert pop up. He had quit being a vegan, that was real, but the way he was going about it definitely seemed to be all for the views. And it's something I've all, always, always, always believed. It's something I've always believed and promoted. And now I look at it, I don't see it as. Whatever Nicholas's reasons were for quitting being a vegan, he seemed pretty happy with his decision. This is so good. I might get a second one. Should I get another one? Delicious. So good. Wow. Ba 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 ba. I'm loving it. I feel so happy. I wish there was something I could say to relay what I'm feeling, to make it you feel what I'm feeling, but I can't. I can just say I'm happy 50 times, but. Something just feels so right. I don't know how to describe it, but other than new batteries, a light, a switch, it's like a veil has been lifted. Speaking of Orlin, our relationship got a major, major boost. Right now, such a moment where I'm just so happy because my tummy's happy and my mind is happy. I get one shot at this life. People change, people literally change. And luckily for Nicholas, he wouldn't really put on any extra weight from all this eating. It's a blessing in disguise, you know, to be able to, to eat three or 4,000 calories a day, every single day, and like, not really gain that much fat. I may gain water weight, you know, someone called me. It was clear there was no going back now. The vegan Nicholas was dead, just like the animals he was now eating, and he was in full carnivore mode and he had finally discovered it. Discovered what? The formula, the winning formula that would get him views. Be more dramatic, eat lots of meat, maybe even cry a little. And he ran with that formula. He ran with it big time. I just wanted to tell you, I just want to be honest, I just wanted to tell you. <laughs> you know, from my heart, from my heart. No, my pants are stuck. <laughs> Why oh. my pants stuck? <laughs> it's getting smashed. It's my cake. Nicholas had told us he was not interested in drama to get views, but now he was actively looking for it. 
YouTube star made famous for eating vegan food on camera breaks down in tears in a bizarre video rant, renouncing veganism and insisting it is wrong and makes people go crazy. And they have a little Nicholas was just doing what the mainstream media, YouTubers, myself included, tried to do. He was trying to get more attention. But the difference with Nicholas was that he told us he would not go after drama just for views. And it seemed like, well, that's what he was beginning to do. Do you blame him for that? Uh, no. No, I don't. Uh, people change. And what was he meant to do? Talk about what he watched on TV last night and tell us boring story after boring story. He was clearly running out of things to talk about. Once he had finished telling us about his personality, his school days and his family, what did he have left to talk about? And if he wanted to go after the drama, then fine, go for it. And it worked. The views started coming in like never before. I made sitcoms in the past. They did no views. I started to cover lol cows. In came the views. We are all shaped by the algorithm. Amberlynn Reed, shaped by the algorithm. Available now on my YouTube channel. Check it out. Please don't do that. Sorry. He would search out the negative attention just so he could react to it. Okay, here's something. These people that make videos in their home and live out their strange lives in front of millions, they often burn out and go a bit nuts. It's not a healthy idea to live online. Oh, I, I think I agree. I don't know why I'm doing this, but oh, this precious little snowflake. Um, yeah, I guess, I don't know. I'm a snowflake. I th so people are saying that I have bulimia, whether it's the amount of food I eat, whether it's the change in my diet recently, so I'm gonna flash a few comments for you at the bottom of the screen. You are so blatantly bulimic, it's painfully obvious at this point. Bulimia cheeks. Only a binger purger could eat like that. Biggest sellout, uh, it's so obvious he's bulimic. He's already getting fat. This is all because you're bulimic, isn't it? Bulimics will eat anything. It would never adhere to a true vegan diet. Kakado is actually pear-shaped. He looks normal on camera, but under the table, he's actually really wide. I mean, do I have to do like, um, do I look like a pear? Am I like, whoop? I mean, I got some love handle over here, but I'm not like obese or anything. Look at your cheeks. It's obvious you have bulimia. You. Nicholas may have started out saying he was done being a part of the vegan community, but the vast majority of the comments were from people in that community, and by reading out their comments in his videos, he was still a part of it. Although he did prove what he said at first, that some in that community were toxic. He knew the more comments he read out, the more chance there was that those same people would leave more comments in the future. Nicholas wasn't stupid, he noticed all of the attention he was getting, and he was clearly loving it. Well, I was just really sharing my thoughts, and it got a lot of attention, and unfortunately, I've gotten this huge, well, I'm not surprised. I kind of knew it would happen, but it, it's hard, like. The videos I made were hard to, I mean, why do you think this is getting attention? He made a video about not being vegan, then he made a video about the video where he discussed not being vegan, and then he made a video where he discussed the video where he discussed not being vegan, I think. And he continued to talk about how he'd quit being a vegan as often as he could. This is about what happened to me because as you know, I stopped being vegan. I made a few videos, they were very controversial, I was confused. He was milking this recent boost in views for all it was worth. After all, he was getting what he had wanted ever since he was a little kid. He was finally in the spotlight. Okay, it wasn't for playing the violin, but he was still in the spotlight. And there was no way he was going to let it go. He did, though, make a video where he apologised to all the people he had once chastised for eating meat in the past. He freely admitted he did the wrong thing back in those days. He was too mean and too stupid. He thought he was changing the world, but now he realised he was simply wasting his time. Nicholas was milking the whole quitting vegan thing as much as he could, but after making several videos about it, he needed some fresh drama. Reading out negative comments was good, but he had done that a few times now as well. So where could he find some new drama? Drama he could really milk? Well, he could find that drama with Orlin.
It's your skin and your hair. Orlin. <laughs> I'm like in the middle of playing. Hold on. You love your hair. What's your hair? Well, hold hold on, let me play. I'm gonna play this and then we can start. We'll, we'll just put that with the pasta. No, you yeah. really want this avocado. It's a special one. Why are you being so weird? What's wrong with you? Here, you really want this avocado. What are you, what are you, you really doing? want it. What are you doing? It's an avocado. How did you... <laughs> what? Will you marry me? <laughs> what? <laughs> yes or no? You can't be serious. <laughs> yes or no? Of course. <laughs> what are you talking <laughs> Wait! <laughs> what? <laughs> wait, why is it. <laughs> Orlin, wait, I don't even know what are you talking <laughs> about. Oh, oh my god. <laughs> Seeing Orlin propose was initially very exciting and a great watch. I say initially because it was all fake. Orlin had already proposed a few weeks earlier. This was just their recreation, as they both called it. Fake, recreation, whatever you want to call it, Orlin had already proposed. But people were happy for them. I was happy for them. They had been together almost three years and the time just seemed right for them. And when they eventually got married, Nicholas could apply for a marriage visa and wouldn't have to leave Colombia every three months. They celebrated sharing the news with a mukbang video and it was a very pleasant video, but Nicholas couldn't have too much pleasant. Pleasant got boring. So cue the drama. It's right now. <laughs> Will and I got a fight, <laughs> and we're about to get married. We're about to get married in like a, a few weeks, two weeks. <laughs> oh, I almost died two days ago. You guys know about this. I almost died because I drank too much water. <laughs> it couldn't make me happy. I, I, I didn't appreciate when him helping me make those <laughs> dumplings. And then he's like, we should just break up. We should, we should not be together. This is not okay. And it's very strange because we've been together for three, four years and it was never like this ever. But it's like all of a sudden now, <laughs> right? But we're about to get married. I'm gonna bleep out, you know, see, I'm a kid channel, you know? Hopefully they will not click on a bit. The parents that watch with their kids, don't watch this with them, you know? I never curse, I'm sorry. That would be bleeped out. So anyways, we're gonna fight about the avocado pasta. I started to notice in these crying videos, his face always looked wet at the very beginning of the video, but then after that, he wouldn't produce any tears. Sometimes his crying sounded like half crying, half laughing. It just didn't seem right to me. But of course, many people believed it. Not everyone, but many did. The wedding was now in danger of not happening. Apparently. In his next drama video, Nicholas really tried to put on an even bigger performance than last time. And that's just how it felt. A performance. Just, I need, I need, I need to get this off my chest. I need to, you know, from my heart, from my heart, I'm a good person, I swear. <laughs> I try so, so hard. to be myself, to share my ups and downs in lives, to not sugarcoat the truth, and everyone's saying th that it's fake, that my love for him is fake, and I can't take it. People are so mean. People are so, so, so mean. Every, every little thing I do, everything, People are trying to bring me down. People are trying to tear me down. People are trying to knock me down to the ground. And I can't, I can't, I can't, I can't. Nicholas assured us this wasn't an act. But then how did he explain that he never used to act this emotional in his videos? He would make milkbang videos and tell stories. 
he wouldn't keep getting upset like he was lately. So, how did he explain this sudden change in personality? First of all, I just want to say, I am emotional, okay? I was a musician. I hear a beautiful piece of music, and I can't help but burst into tears. I'm listening to The Lion King while editing a thumbnail for my next video. It's just so beautiful. I'm thinking of it right now. It's so beautiful. It moves me to tears. I've all, I've always been this way, you guys. And you guys might say I'm crazy. You might say that there's something wrong with me. It's just my brain. I don't know. It's how I am. It's a part of my personality. Some people are more emotional than others. Some people cry nicer than others. Everyone's saying, oh, it was all fake just because I'm not a pretty crier. But what I do know is that what happened was not made up. It was not fake. It was not a show. It's not all these things that people are saying. It was so real. It felt almost like a bad TV show, and the writers suddenly changed the personality of a character and tried to explain this sudden change as if the character had always been this way. Video after video, Nicholas acted one way. Now, all of a sudden, he was this emotional guy who would cry on camera in every other video. But for people who had been following along, he hadn't been this way at all. And his explanation of, oh, I'm a musician, I mean, to be fair, it's probably the best thing he could have come up with. So you weren't buying this new Nicholas? Of course not and the people who actually paid attention weren't buying it either. What do you think about this comment? You know, I'm already so open in my mukbangs. I talk, I cry in I probably a dozen of my mukbangs I cry. I watched all his mukbangs. Once, he got teary-eyed when talking about his old days playing violin, and he didn't cry like he was crying now. He wasn't shutting his eyes as tight as possible, trying to force out tears. So no. He did not cry in a dozen of his mukbangs. Look, I may not have been super entertained by his previous videos, but at least they were videos with a more real Nicholas. This guy wasn't Nicholas anymore. Now he was Nicocardo Avocado. So the argument the pair had over dumplings, or whatever it was even about, was real apparently and their fans were worried they would break up, and it looked like they had when Nicocardo uploaded Why We Broke Up. But it was just a story about them breaking up almost a year ago. A little clickbait was starting to creep into Nicocardo's channel now, and it was a very strange video to say the least. I try not to do that many serious videos on this channel, it's really positive and fun and stuff, but you are getting a glimpse into her life, and I do want to share the good and the bad with you. I want to try to be as real as possible, so... Be as real as possible, so... Nick, as some of you may or may not know, Nicholas went to... went on a trip to America, to London, and to Asia. My heart. You know, it's like when you get in trouble. Nick and I had a disagreement before he left, and... We kind of took a, we took a break from each other. <laughs> Nick went to the US first, and then to London, and then to Asia. Yeah. Well, the first thing that you did in Florida was he actually cheated on me with someone in Florida like a day or two after you arrived to Florida. Right? Yeah. <laughs> so then after, how many hookups do you have in Florida? I don't remember. <laughs> well, yeah, I think he, had, he tried to have two, but he only had know. enough time for one. I don't know, two or, two or something. And then he went to Virginia, and he had, he actually vlogged, he made a vlog, and he went into like a house, and it turns out that that house was a house he went into to have a hookup with somebody else. Well, in Virginia, you had one with a friend, a mutual friend, <laughs> that I met next to you. And then you had like, you had repeats, didn't you, in Virginia? No. Yeah, the one with the Tempur-Pedic bed that you really liked. Oh. <laughs> Another one. Well, you double dipped and you had a there was like friend. There was like four or five in DC. Four or five, yeah. <laughs> Dude, I was like, whoa! <laughs> whoa. <laughs> okay. And then New York, there was like three or four. You did have one at your parents' place. Like close to your parents' house. Shh, my parents might watch this. He also, had, he also had, but he did have one. My parents did might to watch have, this now! He managed to have one in Pennsylvania <laughs> with a very lovely guy. <laughs> he, was he was a really nice person. Well, he turned vegan, so yeah. Do you believe anything in this 
video? <sighs> I don't know. Maybe he did do what was being said. I thought maybe that could be true, but the way they were laughing and acting was very strange. Why would Orlin be laughing so much about being cheated on? Although apparently they were on a break, so I don't know if it's cheating, but Orlin and Nikocado considered it cheating anyway. And the cheating wasn't even the worst part of all of this. Well, in the, like the extra, like, you know when you get an extra sherry in a cake and you really, like that, <laughs> it's like the, you know, usually you get one sherry, but I got two. Well, when he came back, <laughs> he brought me a bug, a little bugger. <laughs> brought a bug. He brought me a bug. <laughs> It wasn't a really bad bug, but it was a bug. And it well, was, we were afraid. It was a, we it was, were very afraid of. It like, was a gross. Bug. I literally felt, you guys, like my world was coming to an end. I. It's one thing. To take breaks. It's one thing to break up. It's one thing to test waters. It's one thing to have affairs, but it's another thing to get a bug. Oh yeah. That could possibly end your life early. He got a. And really... for me to, to think about. Giving that to you uh -huh. was terrible. Yeah. Um, it's some, you know, I, I feel awful. It's like, you know, you have to take personal responsibility. It's like, luckily it was nothing serious, but. It was an uncomfortable bug. <laughs> <laughs> and again, parents, I know this is a children's channel. I always say uh, my mukbangs are like for kids and everything. Who knows if this whole video was real? Maybe it was. I suspect he did do all, or at least some, of the things he talked about in this video. What was clear though, was that the whole feel of his channel was beginning to change drastically. Today, uh, do you want to say hi? Hey guys, we're getting married today. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, just so like, hey guys, it's a great day. I just had a banana, we're getting married. You know, <laughs> yeah. normal day. Normal. You know, you know honestly, that's how I feel about this whole thing too. It's just like, this is what I'm wearing. I'm wearing all white like the bride. He's wearing white because he's the bride. No, I like... Despite their apparent problems, the wedding was on. Although, you wouldn't be able to tell they were getting married unless he told us. It just felt like a normal day. He was vlogging, he was checking the comments on his YouTube, he even headed to a library to upload a previous mukbang. But the pair were ready, and so were his fans. Here we are at the courthouse. This is where people sign sign the papers. In line right now, my we parents are over there. They gave us a flower with a pen to sign up. They taped it to the pen. <laughs> That's where the tax dollars go to. Nice papers and yeah, it's an office. I'm not gonna show my family doesn't want to be on camera, so. Is it all good? Yeah. Oh, raise your right hands for me, please. Be both solemnly swear and or affirm that all the information on that form is true and correct to the best of your knowledge. Yes? She'll show you where to sign. That's the room we go in. <laughs> Mmm, this is this is the room everyone. Oh, it's plastic. Okay. <laughs> now, and if you just want to focus on one of us, and we'll focus and just hold it the whole time. Okay. Is it, why does it say airplane on it? You have come here today to be joined in matrimony in accordance with the laws of the state of Florida. You will be exchanging vows that will unite the two of you in marriage. These vows are an outward symbol of the inner union of your hearts. Nicholas, repeat after me. I promise to love you. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I messed up. To make our home. To make our home. One of love. One of love. Thank you. What, what? Because you never know when the sloth gets hungry. We're going to be at the room. Probably the same thing, yeah. We're going to go, go back to our room. And this is all one way, right? No, it's two ways, but... It makes no sense. And that was it. The pair were married. In shorts. But it didn't matter what they were wearing. What mattered is that they loved each other, and they had just gotten married. And how did they celebrate? The only way they knew how. Mukbang style. Hey guys, we're gonna come get celebrate our marriage at Chick-fil-A. Look where we are. We are totally trolling. I, this isn't trolling. This is like, honestly, I've never eaten at Chick-fil-A in my entire life. So what better day to eat when we're married? Our exactly. Marriage. So if you guys don't know, here, I love the gays here. We're gonna walk together. Ooh, here we go. Come on, like come on baby. Over. Come on, baby, boo-boo. <laughs> so Chick-fil-A, 
the business representation has made statements about gay people saying like, we don't think they deserve marriage, we don't think they deserve the same rights, yep. something along those lines. Well, we got everything. We just got married at and the courthouse. <laughs> and we're gonna eat here to celebrate. <laughs> because, honestly. Because why not? Why not? Why not? <laughs> I can't believe we're married. Oh my god. Eating chicken I can't believe it's it. It's been a long time. Oh my gosh. We're gonna tell you all about it in our mukbang. I don't know what we're getting. I've never been here. You? <laughs> you watch us on YouTube? Yes, no. Yes. Hi. How are you? Good. How are you, How are you <laughs> nice guys? You. Good. Oh my, oh my god. I can't believe it. This is crazy. Wait, what's your name? Yanni. Yanni. Nick Accardo and Arlen were married. They couldn't have been happier. Well, Arlen couldn't. Nick Ocado was having some problems, though. What is... What is in here? What is in here? What is in here? Oh my... What is this? What is this? <laughs> What the heck happened to me? Oh, oh, oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Oh, 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 it goes behind my arm. I have gained weight. And I don't even know why. I don't know why. I have a fast metabolism. It seemed like Nikocado might be done with mukbangs and eating unhealthily. He told us he was going to lose the extra weight he had put on. Although he seemed pretty confused about what that weight was. Maybe it's just all what I maybe this is all water weight. I'm holding on to water weight. I really just feel like this is water weight. It has to be. There's no way. I'm hoping, I'm praying that this is just water weight. That this is water weight and it comes off in like a week. Nikocado had said many times that being a vegan wasn't good for his brain. But the diet he was on now clearly wasn't good for his body. Despite telling us he was going to lose the weight, in his very next video, he was back to eating too much bad food. However, his next video was titled, I'm going vegan. So maybe he was done with the fatty meat and sweets, and he was going to get back in shape by eating a plant-based diet again. So I decided I'm gonna go vegan for today. Was this a clickbait title to reel people in? Yes, yes it was. Next, he had a 10,000 calorie challenge. Surely he didn't believe the weight he had gained was just water weight. The foods he was eating in his videos were getting worse and worse. When we first met Nicholas, he was strong, passionate, determined. He didn't give a damn about the views if it meant not being who he was. He made videos to motivate, to inspire, to be a friend to those who needed one. And now, reason usually I post a video, I do it at 12 p.m. Los Angeles, I wake up the next day, and then with one full day, the video probably has at least 50,000 views. By the, sorry, the camera shut off. By a day and a half, it's at like 60, 80,000 views, and then after one week, my average video right now gets about 100,000 views, give or take. Maybe a little bit less, maybe a little bit more. About 100,000 views is my average video. The past three days, Excuse me, I posted an Italian takeout food um, that got like 18,000 in the first day. The second day I posted a street food mukbang that got everything. You know, I'm here to make this, I'm here to work as hard as I can for you guys. I put everything into this. I just feel so failed. I don't know why no one likes me though. I try so hard. This seemed like this was it now. Nicholas was going to be this guy who got bigger and bigger, who would cry all the time, who would seek out drama and negativity. There was to be no more positive fluff stories, no more vegan meals on camera, no more Nicholas Perry. He was now Nicocardo Avocado, and he was hurting his body more and more, all in the name of fame. If he carried on doing what he was doing, he could well be making an early grave for himself. But at the moment, he seemed to think it was all worth it to be where he had wanted to be his whole life. In the spotlight. 
Nikocado Avocado was literally dying for attention. There's a lot of blood. Yeah, he passed out on the floor. No idea. When I decided to be a YouTuber, I didn't know it would be a bunch of fake people with fake little games and fake little stories and pretend to be happy when they're really sad, blah, 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 pretend to be sad when they're really happy. Just so much fakeness. And I have had it up to here with a few of them. It's like all right here. You're living off trash. Stop. It's all on my lower back. I've never felt it like this before. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I look like kiwi. I, I have. That's a lot of water weight today. I know. A lot of water weight. Yeah. <laughs> Why is my life always so dramatic? Oh, hot. I can't open my eye. It's it's pasted shut. Hey, it's Orlin. Hello. Orlin. There's so many, oh, some legs are, oh, there they go. <laughs> ah! I was just saying, I was gonna walk and he, I, I was very afraid that he might follow me. Um, Mr. Snowflake, I hate you. I hate Mr. Snowflake. I hate Mr. Snowflake. I hate you, Mr. Snowflake. I hate you. You're just terrible, terrible, terrible. Oh, I hate you. I hate Mr. Snowflake so much. I hate him so much, I want him to burn. That Snowflake dude, can't stand him. Hope his next poo is a pineapple. I hope Mr. Snowflake melts into a puddle of poo. I hate your guts, Mr. Snowflake. You scumbag. Mr. Snowflake, that guy's a cum crust. Mr. Snowflake is truly an awful human being. He once accidentally ran over a child and then backed up again and ran over it again. And then he put it in drive and ran over it a third time. I was in the passenger seat actually my fault, but he's still a piece of shit. I hate Mr. Snowflake. <laughs> Do you like Mr. Snowflake? So far too long, you have picked on Mr. Jimmy Bunker and made him cry for having too much dandruff in his beard. The man washes it once a year, that's enough. I can't fucking stand you, Mr. Snowflake. Ugh. Yeah, I can't. I can't stand Mr. Snowflake. I hate him. I mean, I, I personally hate him. He comes into our community of fatties and thinks he can just own the place. I'm sick of it. I simply despise Mr. Snowflake. Jimmy Bunker's alright. Arlen, thank you for being with us. What do you want to tell the viewers?